You know, when you find out that your water could cause cancer and you're a mother, it changes your life because you think to yourself, I try to protect my children from everything that I know of, but how can I protect them from an unknown? When I turn on the faucet, I don't just turn on the water, I turn on fear. When you enter Amy Brown's home in Belmont, North Carolina, you're greeted by cases of bottled water. This is how her family has been living for a year and a half after she learned her well water contained toxic heavy metals. The way we live now, you know, every single meal, we have to grab a bottle of water. In 2015, the state sent letters to neighbors living within 1,000 feet of Duke Energy's power plants, offering them to test their well water. The results showed high levels of arsenic, vanadium, hexavalent chromium, toxins typically found in industrial waste like coal ash, which is the byproduct of burning coal for electricity. For decades, Duke has stored this ash in man-made ponds, like those behind Amy Brown's home. You have unlined, leaking coal ash ponds that are filled with toxic waste that sets in the groundwater. About an hour away in a small town called Dukeville is the home of the Buckstein plant, the oldest Duke plant in the state. I've been using this ever since I've been living here. And of course, I've got a, got a little question mark, you know, if I'm watering my plants with it, is it going to affect my food that I water? But the uh, vanadium and, and uh, everything like that, and it showed that it is over the permissible limits. It changes your life right then and there. It totally changes your life. I remember looking right there at that sink, and I'm sitting in this chair. And I remember looking at the sink, thinking about the gallons of Kool-Aid I had made for my children. Duke has provided residents with bottled water since the first wells were tested in 2015, and will continue to do so until a permanent water solution is set in place. But neighbors in Belmont and Dukeville want these coal ash ponds permanently removed. Duke says their ponds aren't responsible for the contamination. Uh, when we talk about coal ash, we like to remind folks that EPA has determined many times that it is a non-hazardous material. It's also not toxic, and I think that's one of the big myths out there. The good news is uh, we continue to see no indication that ash basins at the Buck and Allen facilities have impacted neighbors' water. And we know that from um, national experts that have come in behind us to study that and provide a greater level of understanding to the company. We wanted to know as well, of course. But environmentalists aren't convinced coal ash isn't a problem. This is just a problem that's been ignored for decades, both the risk to rivers and what drinking water supplies and, and also to neighbors. And you know, until you actually get in there and get good data on what's in the water coming off the site, you really don't know. What we found in North Carolina is that basically every coal ash site in the state had groundwater violations at what they called their compliance boundary, the boundary at which you weren't supposed to have contaminated groundwater going off the site. And I'm afraid that as we look around the country, we're going to see that this is a really widespread problem that a lot of states up until now have not done anything about. In 2014, Duke came under fire after a massive coal ash spill in the Dan River in Eden, North Carolina. Duke has since paid more than $100 million in fines to clean up the damage. We had 39,000 tons or more of coal ash to fall into the Dan River, millions of gallons of polluted water, and it woke up the state and the public of the state, which had already been concerned. Last year, new federal regulations went into place that set new standards for how electric companies remove coal ash. Duke Energy is working to remove coal at eight out of its 14 sites in North Carolina. In Ohio, experts are concerned about how companies will handle plants that closed before this new regulation went into effect, and if a Dan River spill could happen here. I think Duke's primary goal is to their bondholders and shareholders. It's not first and foremost public health, even though I think they like to think that's the case, but truly it's about bondholders and shareholders and decommissioning a plant for the least cost. The Beckjord plant in New Richmond, 20 minutes outside of Cincinnati, closed in 2014, and it sits along the Ohio River. There are four unlined coal ash ponds just at that site. 
And these fly ash ponds are right next to the Ohio River and adjacent to our well fields. Uh, so a flood could easily breach those dams. Um, there are f at least five million people downriver in the Ohio River getting their water supply from the river. Um, and they should be concerned as well. I'd hate to see where all five million people are living off of bottled water. There are 44 unlined coal ash ponds at more than a dozen power plants in Ohio. You've got 44 unlined coal ash sites in the state of Ohio. You've got 44 disasters waiting to happen. As electric utilities take steps to deal with coal ash removal, residents in North Carolina are still left waiting for answers. They want to know when their water will be safe again. What will your children remember when they grow up? What would their childhood memories be? Mine will remember the time that we lived on bottled water and their mother had to fight for protection to try to protect them.